the stories of mahabharata retold by sudipta bhaumik welcome dear friends to another episode of the stories of mahabharata in the last episode we heard how bhagiratha brought ganga to the earth to fill the oceans we also heard the story of rishwasringa and how he brought rains to the kingdom of lomapada The Pandavas continued their pilgrimage from the banks of the Kaushik river. They visited the holy confluence of the river Ganga and the ocean and then the Vaitarani river in Kalinga province. When they arrived at the foothills of the Mahendra mountains, Rishi Lomasha stopped and said, "Here we will meet Lord Vishnu's avatar, the great sage Parashurama." Rishi Parashurama's disciple Akritabrana greeted the Pandavas and welcomed them to the ashram. Yudhishthir asked, "When can we have the privilege of meeting Lord Parashurama?" Akritabrana said, "Lord Parashurama is aware of your visit. He meets his visitors only on the eighth and the fourteenth day of the moon. Tonight you take rest, and tomorrow." which is the 14th day of the moon he will receive his blessings yudhishthir asked tell us about the glory of lord parashurama we are eager to know akrita brana then narrated this story long ago there lived a ferocious king named kartyavirya who had a thousand arms He received a boon from Rishi Dattatreya that gave him immense power. However, instead of using his power for the good of humanity, Kartavirya abused the boon by torturing all living beings. The gods were fed up with Kartavirya's atrocities. They went to Lord Vishnu and said, "O oh Lord, Kartavirya must be stopped, else he will destroy the earth." He has become too powerful and now nobody can kill him except you. Lord Vishnu smiled and said, "Don't worry. I will kill Kartavirya. But to do that, I need to appear on the earth as a human being." During that time, a king named Gadhi ruled the province of Kanyakubja. He had a beautiful daughter named Satyavati. Richik, the Brahmin sage and the son of the great sage Maharishi Bhrigu, saw Satyavati and fell in love. He went to King Gadhi and asked for her hand in marriage. Gadhi was not very keen on giving his only daughter in marriage to a Brahmin rishi, but he couldn't refuse him either. to make things difficult for richik he said i can give you my daughter but as per my family traditions you must give me a handsome dowry richik said for satyavati i will get you whatever you want get me 1000 white horses with black ears said the king richik went out on a quest to find the horses Soon enough he acquired the horses from Varuna the god of water and gave them to king Gadhi as his dowry the king had no other option but to give his daughter in marriage to Richik few months later maharishi bhrigu and his wife came to visit his son richik and daughter in law satyavati Satyavati received her parents in law with respect and took good care of them to make sure they had nothing to complain about Maharishi Bhrigu was pleased with her hospitality and offered her a boon Satyavati knew what she wanted a son 
but she was also pained by her father's ill fortune of not having a son as an heir to the throne satyavati knelt before maharishi bhrigu and said oh father if you permit i would like to ask for two boons please bless me and my mother to have a son each maharishi raised his hand and said so be it he gave her a bowl of a sacred potion and said ask your mother to drink this potion and she will have a son then he gave another bowl of potion to satyavati this is for you to drink and you will be the mother of a handsome and powerful son worthy to be my grandson satyavati gave her mother the potion her mother the queen of king gadi thought that maharishi must have done special favors to his daughter in law and gave her a more powerful potion she swapped the potions and drank the one that was for her daughter satyavati drank the one for her mother however satyavati's mother couldn't fool the wise and all knowing rishi bhrigu he called satyavati and said your mother has tricked you and swapped the potions for this your son will be born a brahmin but he will be a kshatriya by profession and your mother's son will be born a kshatriya but will be a brahmin by his vocation satyavati threw herself at bhrigu's feet and said oh father please please be kind to me do not penalize me for my mother's sin bhrigu was firm in his resolve he said i am sorry satyavati i cannot do anything about it satyavati cried and said please have pity on me i can accept if my grandson becomes a kshatriya but not my son please bhrigu said all right then your grandson will be a kshatriya in due course of time Satyavati gave birth to a boy. He was named Jamadagni. Jamadagni grew up to be a learned, wise man and a skilled warrior. He married Renuka, the beautiful daughter of King Prasenjit. Jamadagni and Renuka gave birth to five sons. The youngest of them was Rama or Parashurama. He was the wisest and the strongest of the brothers but nobody knew that parashurama was the incarnation of lord vishnu and he was born to fulfill a mission one day rishi jamadagni's wife renuka went to the river to fetch water there she saw the handsome king chitraratha swimming and playing in the waters with his wives chitraratha was kissing his wives caressing them fondling them the women laughed and tried to swim away while the king chased them in the water and pounced on whom he could get his hands on watching from distance renuka felt a surge of desire overwhelm her senses She fought hard to control herself and ran back to her home in her wet clothes. As she entered the house, she found her husband Jamadagni waiting for her. Jamadagni asked, "I am thirsty. Where is my water?" Renuka couldn't answer. She was still trying to recover from her condition. Jamadagni looked at her flushed face and knew that she has been a victim of desire and lust. He was furious. He said, "You unfaithful woman, you have been overcome with desire for another man. You are a disgrace to this house, to this family. You have no right to live." He called his sons. The four sons except Parashurama came to the room. Jamadagni ordered them kill this wretched woman now The four brothers were shocked to hear this How could their father ask them to kill their mother 
they stood speechless. The furious Rishi cursed the sons and they turned into mindless creatures. Parashurama was in the forest to fetch some firewood. When he returned home with a pile of wood and his axe in hand, the angry Rishi Jamadagni ordered him, Rama, I order you to kill this unfaithful woman right now. Parashurama did not hesitate. With one powerful blow of his axe, he beheaded his mother. Jamadagni's anger subsided. He called Parashurama to his side and said, My son, you have obeyed my orders and carried out the most difficult task. Ask what you want and I will fulfill your wishes. Parashurama said, Father, I wish my mother to be alive again. I wish to forget this incident forever and may I be pardoned for my terrible and sinful act. I also wish my brothers to regain their usual self. Bless me with a long life and may I become the most powerful an undefeatable warrior in the world. Jamadagni granted him all his wishes. But Parashurama's story does not end here. One day, while Jamadagni's sons were not home, King Karthavirya attacked and plundered Jamadagni's hermitage and stole his sacred cow. When Parashurama returned home and saw the destruction, he was mad with rage. He picked up his axe and ran after Kartavirya. Soon, a fierce battle ensued between Parashurama and Kartavirya. But Kartavirya was no match for Parashurama. Parashurama soon overpowered Kartavirya and with his axe chopped off his thousand arms before decapitating him. Karthavirya's dead body crashed to the ground and the earth was rid of a tyrant, Kshatriya king. Lord Vishnu fulfilled his promise. The angry sons of Karthavirya decided to avenge their father's death and attacked Jamadagni's hermitage. Jamadagni was busy with his daily prayers when Karthavirya's sons pounced on him with their weapons. Jamadagni, although a powerful warrior, refrained from defending himself as he was in his place of worship. He tried to call his son, Rama! Rama! But before he could say any more, Kartavirya's sons killed him. Parashurama was devastated to find his father dead in his prayer room. With the fire of vengeance burning in him, Parashurama completed his father's funeral and his last rites. Then he proceeded to destroy the sons of Kartavirya. With his sole hands, Parashurama killed the sons and followers of Kartavirya. Still, he was not satisfied. He vowed to cleanse the earth of Kshatriyas like Kartavirya. He travelled around the world and purged the earth of Kshatriyas 21 times. His grandfather Richik pleaded him to stop killing the Kshatriyas. Richik's plea finally calmed the angry sage. He stopped the killings and retired into the Mahindra mountains. The next day, Lord Parashurama met the Pandavas and their entourage. He asked Yudhishthira to spend one more night with him in the Mahendra mountains. Yudhishthira was happy to oblige. The following day, the Pandavas left the Mahendra mountains and began their long trek south to continue their pilgrimage. The Pandavas visited the Godavari river basin, the Dravira province and many other holy places of pilgrimage 
before arriving in prabhasha the land of the vrishnis when krishna heard of their arrival he and balarama along with a small contingent of warriors came to visit krishna and balarama were hurt broken to see the pandavas the long and arduous journey has taken its toll on their health they looked frail and tired their clothes were tattered their hair unkempt and matted their body covered with dirt yudhishthira welcomed them and paid them his respects balarama embraced yudhishthira and said following the path of dharma does not ensure happiness and not following dharma does not ensure unhappiness either he turned towards krishna and the other vishnis and said look at yudhishthira look at our cousins look at draupadi they were tattered clothes their hair knotted their skin blistered the rulers of indraprastha are suffering in the jungles while that evil prince duryodhana and his brothers enjoy the luxuries of the palace watching this people would think it is better to avoid the path of truth and righteousness shame on bhishma kripa drona and dhritarashtra how could they enjoy their life in the palace by punishing their own descendants satya ki said no point in lamenting now we must do the right thing even if yudhishthira doesn't want us to let us the vrishnis the bhojas and the andhaka clans get together and attack duryodhana and destroy him let yudhishthira keep his promise and live in the forest for the remaining period we would install abhimanyu as the ruler of hastinapur until he returns krishna with his calm voice said satya ki we could have followed your advice however i don't think yudhishthira would like to accept a kingdom that he didn't win with his own hands yudhishthira his brothers and draupadi none would give up their morality for the sake of their kingdom yudhishthira stood up and said truth is the only thing we need to protect not the kingdom krishna knows me well and i know him too satya ki when krishna thinks the time has arrived to exercise our might go and attack duryodhana till then let us follow our path of truth and struggle The Stories of Mahabharata is written, directed and told by Shudipta Bhamik. Audio engineering, original music and sound design by Avi Ziv. Find us online at facebook.com slash Mahabharata podcast. Join the group for updates and news. Subscribe to the podcast using iTunes or any other podcast catcher. On Twitter, we are at Mahabharat Audio. The podcast is distributed under the Creative Commons non-commercial license.